the physiological changes in pregnancy part 2 in the previous video we have seen about the changes seen in the female genital tract as well as the changes seen in the breast during pregnancy now let's continue with the hematological changes seen during pregnancy first there is increase in blood volume by about 30 percent and the plasma volume increases by 50 percent whereas the cell volume increases by 20 percent. So, this disproportionate increase in the ratio of the plasma volume to that of red red blood cells causes something called as physiological anemia of pregnancy. As the name suggests, this is just a physiological change, nothing pathological. This occurs due to disproportionate increase between the plasma volume and the red blood cells. Next coming to the changes in the composition of the blood. The RBC count decreases so before that as the blood volume increases along with the plasma volume and the cell volume this leads to the hemodilution. So pregnancy is a state of hemodilution. So, the erythrocyte count falls and the hemoglobin concentration also decreases. And there is increase in the WBCs count that is the leukocyte count to more than 12,000 cells per millimeter cube. And also we see an increase in the clotting factors as we all know pregnancy is a hypercoagulable state this is also one of the factor responsible for that. All the clotting factors increase except the clotting factor 11 and 13. Then the fibrinogen level also increases this is also responsible for the hypercoagulable state. But important thing to note is that the clotting time and the bleeding time remain unchanged. then the plasminogen activity also increases during pregnancy. So, these are all the hematological changes seen during pregnancy. Next let us see about the biochemical changes seen during pregnancy. There is decrease in the serum proteins during pregnancy and this is due to the hydremia which is nothing but increase in water content in the blood. So, due to which there is decrease in the serum protein levels and the decrease is more in albumin. Next coming to the serum electrolytes, there is decrease in sodium level, decrease in potassium levels, but the potassium levels may increase to normal levels in late pregnancy. 
the calcium level also decreases but the chloride remains unchanged and the bicarbonate levels also decrease during pregnancy. So, these are all the serum electrolyte changes seen during pregnancy. Also, the alpha fetoprotein levels are increased during pregnancy especially in the second half of pregnancy and their values range from 53 to 55 grams per liter. Here the AFP stands for alpha fetal protein. Next the lipids the lipid levels increase during pregnancy there is increase in total serum lipids triglycerides cholesterol and also phospholipids. There is increase in all these lipids. So, these are the biochemical changes. Next let us see the metabolic changes seen during pregnancy. First is the weight gain. The normal weight gain lies in the range of 9 to 11 kgs in pregnancy, but this varies from person to person according to the BMI of the mother. So, the rate of increase there is no appreciable weight gain in the first 3 months in the first trimester then between 20 weeks to delivery the rate of increase is 0.5 kg per week. So, there is increase of 0.5 kgs per week is the rate of increase in weight. Next coming to the water metabolism, water retention is seen during pregnancy a minimum of 6.5 liters of water is retained during pregnancy out of which 3.5 liters is that of the fetus placenta and the amniotic fluid the other 3 liters is due to increase in the blood volume of the mother and the uterine size. So, the water retention is one of the cause for the pitting edema which is physiologically seen during pregnancy especially in the ankles and the legs. Next is the carbohydrate metabolism. The fasting blood sugar is lower than normal levels and there is high concentration of free fatty acids in the plasma. This represents 
an accelerated starvation state during pregnancy. Next, pregnancy is said to be a diabetogenic state This is because the hormones like human placental lactogen, the steroids, estrogen and the progesterone are all diabetogenic. Also, there is production of the enzyme insulinase, which causes degradation of the insulin. All these are responsible for the diabetogenic state during pregnancy. Next, the fat metabolism. In pregnancy, the storage of fat increases. This is maximum during second trimester and it decreases slightly during the third trimester. As we have seen already the free fatty acids, the phospholipids, cholesterols, everything increase during pregnancy. And because of the accelerated starvation stage and along with the increased levels of fatty acids, ketonuria and ketonemia can develop more faster in pregnancy. In conditions like Hyperemesis gravidarum, starvation, or uncontrolled diabetes mellitus. Next, coming to the protein metabolism, the fetus and the placenta contain around 500 grams of protein and the other 500 gram of protein is added as contractile protein and to the uterus. And also to hemoglobin and other plasma proteins. Next coming to the mineral metabolism, the copper and the ceruloplasmin levels increases during pregnancy, whereas calcium and the magnesium levels slightly decrease. Next the iron metabolism, serum iron tends to decrease during pregnancy especially after 24th week. And due to which there is increase in total iron binding capacity. Also there is decrease in the serum folate and B12 levels due to which in all the pregnant mothers the iron folic acid supplementation is given antenatally and also it is continued postnatally. And the Indian women are more prone to develop anemia because of these reasons. So 
this is all for this video we will see the rest in our next video thank you